I'm your host as always bringing you the final review of 2023 for my 100 favorite things I like about Knott's Berry Farm. So for this final list of items I wanted to cover Knott's Berry Farm or sorry Knott's Mary Farm but also a couple of bits of exciting bits of news for 2024. So to start it off because the new items are a little bit more quick is that for prestige pass holders um, you're going to get a new, or if you're a Prestige Pass holder, then there's going to be a new VIP lounge or rest area that's going to open up starting January 1st, 2024. It's going to basically be a place where you can relax, get a snack, some cookies, and if you're on the meal or drink plan, then you can also get uh, fresh soda. It's going to be where um, Gertie's dress shop used to be next to the sheriff's office and across from the blacksmith. So essentially once you enter the park and you're heading back towards Calico River Rapids, I actually haven't had a chance to check it out. And I, in the recent trip, we had a, just in the excitement of the day, we kind of missed um, checking it out. But that's kind of the impression I get based on the description of where it's going to be at. So if you've been thinking about becoming a prestige pass holder, then this adds to the list of things to think about, along with the usual benefits, access to the, to the prestige uh, parking lot and things like that. And then also for 2024, Camp Snoopy is going to be getting a redesign where um, opening Memorial Weekend or as of Memorial Weekend, you're, it's going to have a look and feel inspired by the California High Sierras. Um, there's also going to be a new roller coaster called Snoopy's Tender Paw Twister Coaster, which looks essentially it's a kid friendly coaster, but it's going to be able to fit adults and kids alike. So families can go on it together from the promo video. It looks like it's, you know, the usual ups and downs, twists and turns. I don't see any loops or anything like that. So essentially it's your just your basic roller coaster. So it's geared towards families and provide like moderate to mild thrills. Um, there's also going to be a new swing called Sally Swing Along and an updated Camp Snoopy Theater, an updated Barrel Bridge and Waterfall. So it kind of feels like they're going to unify the look and feel of the area a little bit, add a new coaster and all of that stuff. I'm not sure where the coaster is going to go or if it's going to be in the vicinity of um, the Grand Sierra Railroad or something like that. Hopefully it's not where Montezuma's Revenge is going to be, but um, seeing a bit of... I'm still not sure on the news for that as far as if they've gotten the part they need and they're still waiting to for it to come in and install it or if it's actually going to be shut down or anything like that. But uh, we'll see all about that. But as far as Camp Snoopy goes, look out for a redesign later in 2024. So with that being said, um, as far as Knott's Mary Farm goes, um, it's essentially a similar review to my thoughts about Knott's Scary Farm. You get good theming around the park for... Christmas so you in ghost town you have the candy cane lane so they open a photo op area at the end of it so you can take a picture in front of a mine door with nutcrackers and gingerbread men and they bring out a lot of uh, vendor stalls so um, as you're walking up through the streets of ghost town you can stop at various st uh, stalls for food and trinkets and gifts and caps and clothing all sorts of different little things um, to kind of get you in the spirit and mood for Christmas. So if you've ever liked that scene from like Back to the Future 3 when um, Doc Brown and Marty are in the Old West and they're um, in the town square for the, um, cl the clock tower inauguration ceremony, you kind of get that uh, the hints of that kind of vibe when you're going through the streets. Um, aside from that, you have things like the, also have like the Wilderness Hall is re-themed as Santa's Cottage. Um, so you can visit with Santa. You can also get cookies and drinks there. Um, there's a stage for that setup as well. But that's very nicely done in a the Christmas theme. Um, at the Calico Saloon, you can get Christmas themed drinks like the Christmas Ale, which when we went was out of stock. So I ended up getting the Ginger Snap Spice Rum Mule. So it was a perfect balance of sweetness and alcohol. Very tasty and refreshing. So 
I will recommend that, but if you're more of a beer drinker, then they do have a few different beers on available as well to try that out. Um, I don't know if they did introduce this particular tombstone in the cemetery for Christmas or if they if it's been there, but there's now a tombstone for Ebenezer Scrooge. So a little bit of fun uh, theming there. And so that's the bulk of that for that. Um, and then you have the usual decorations like wreaths and poinsettias and various Christmas decorations like that. In Camp Snoopy, you have um, the waterfall park area themed up for Christmas stuff with candy canes and gifts and things like that. So definitely fun theming there. Not too much else going on. So, I mean, it's already kid friendly, so not much other theming needs to be done, but they do theme that area up to have a little bit more decorations there. Um, as far as things like runners up go, um, in Fiesta Village, there's not too much going on, but they have some nice flowers by the entrance on the silver bullet side. So that's a good photo op there. If you just want pictures in front of flowers, and then the stage by the Calico Mine Ride is themed up with snow and a barn, snowman and a bridge for those night evening performances. So um, some good stuff there as well. Um, as far as the boardwalk goes, there's not too much daytime theming. There is a couple of reindeers and that little, and that big planter thing in front of Berry Tales, but it doesn't really stand out until the evening time when the lights turn on on the reindeer and also for the waterfall. So. In the blog post for the photo gallery, I do have a video I took of that, the lighting there, so you can see the contrast of the waterfall, the tree on the boardwalk shop, the Knott's Tower with the K, um, uh, Supreme Scream, and all of that in the background, so you get a look and feel of that area. And then, of course, now that I've experienced the snowfall at um, in Ghost Town in the evening at four at around 5 30 or so I definitely recommend just checking that out if you want falling snow in the Ghost Town area they have a light show as well with some music so definitely get there before 5 30 I would say maybe a good 10 or 15 minutes ahead of time that is a little bit extra but you can spend time in the shops walking around a little bit and um, that way you can find a spot easily because it does fill up pretty fast it's not necessarily packed but there are a lot of people or it's easy for a lot of people to get packed up in that street um so I, that's why i say get there about 10 minutes early so you can find a good spot uh hang out check out what's going on in the area while you wait as well and that snow stuff happens in um in the street next to the calico saloon and the churro shop down that alley as you're heading towards the schoolyard so um that's the kind of um, area for that as well. So definitely recommend it. Like I said, there's uh, random stuff going on. There's definitely more stuff going on in, on the weekends, but if you kind of want to go through ghost town, have the experience the music, the look and feel of Christmas and all of that, then Mary farm or Knott's Mary farm is definitely the thing to experience. So uh, going through ghost town, regardless of the time you have your various shops and um, gifts and gift shops and things like that. Everything is themed up nicely, so I definitely recommend that. All the food, or they do have additional food menu items for um, that are themed for for Christmas and all of that. So it is definitely um, an experience worth having. Um, so with that being said, that's really the bulk of this particular episode. I didn't really want to mix it in with a regular podcast episode this time. Uh, just because I wanted to go through the Knott's Mary Farm stuff and next week's podcast episode will have its own extra content. But also for this episode, I wanted to kind of keep it in theme and mention that I am working on next year's uh, reviews as well. So while this is this year was a, um, built around 100 things I like about Knott's, next year is going to be a little bit more uh, detail oriented for stuff. Um, and that all goes back to what I mentioned on the last podcast episode about um, the upcoming um, time off for podcasting just to finish planning on uh, podcast episodes and topics and things to cover and that sort of stuff. So look out for some um, exciting uh, NOS reviews for next year as well. Uh, but with that being said, that is all for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that. You can um, find all the social media sites I'm on by visiting the website at headphonesneal.reviews, which also has subscription links supporting the show. Of course, um, this episode I'm gonna release around the same time for everybody on the same day. So 
Uh, patrons will still on Patreon at patreon.com slash Patel M01. We'll still get it first. Um, so you guys will get it in the morning and then everyone else will get it in the afternoon. So a little bit less of that um, d uh, time delay between the patron supporter v uh, feed update and the free version. So um, just kind of a Christmas thank you for being a supporter, a listener, a subscriber, sharing, retweeting, whatever you've done to help share my content. So kind of just my quick thank you for doing that. So um, but like I said, that's all there is for this particular episode. So for the next episode, look out for a, for a full on episode of reviews and content updates and things like that. But that's all there is for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until next time.